quiet island, an ancient island home to warrior clans, mostly ninjas. While their clan law dictates every 15 years a battle circuit is held to decry the mightiest warrior, the Maximus Circuit. Maximus! The last fighter standing on the island wins. They are awarded cash money, cash money, and cash money. For 500 years, the wildlands have won. Rex, one of the two Wilder clan heirs, has made a deal with key entrance that they will ensure Rex wins, so he can sell the land to the Rudder Corp and split the earnings. But splitting the pot is for babies. <laughs> and the other, I'm the other heir and they'll have to get through me first and I'll show them the true maniac fighting. Ace is wild. Ace is wild. I just said that. Um, so yeah, this is a really fun little brawler. Um, like a side-scrolling beat-em-up type game. And it's not quite the mechanics you'd expect. This is made by Tyler Doak. Um, you can get it at his website. It's also on um, Steam Greenlight. I'll give you a link to the where you can buy it and uh, and the Steam Greenlight in the description. And you can pick your difficulty. If you're not very good at brawlers or, you know, you just want to start out, you might want to try it on Calm. Uh, we're gonna stay on sassy, that's normal. I've heard that he adjusted the difficulty. If you were playtesting, which I don't know how many people even did, but uh, it sounds like he adjusted the difficulty so the normal settings are a bit easier and the hard ones are pretty damn hard. The, the way the difficulty works is pretty interesting. Um, at higher difficulties, you and enemies both deal a lot more damage. So it's not so much that you have to spam tons of attacks, it's that, you know, any little opening you give your enemies can be fatal. Actually, before we start the game, let's take a look at the tutorial, shall we? This will teach you how to play, like many tutorials. It's not completely terrible, unlike some tutorials. You can jump! You can jump higher by holding the jump button, you can jump off walls, and in the air. There's this non-harmful enemy in here that you can pound on. Use the dash button in any direction. Holding no direction is a homing dash. Jumping, dashing, dodging require movement to be used again. You can use them immediately after hitting an enemy, getting hit, or successfully dodging. Not after randomly dodging, huh? Um, also, the double jump recharges after a little bit on its own. And so do some of the other stuff. Some of the other stuff. But you can't constantly do it, but, uh... After a little bit, your dash will come back. I prefer the air dash to get around to the uh, double jump. The double jump in mid-combat isn't as useful. Because the air dash can go in any direction. Or the uh, what the homing dash is, it homes in straight to, I think, the nearest enemy. Right, and rapid combo is a normal attack. And you can actually move enemies around by hitting them. Striking enemies builds your wild meter, which I usually just call the panic meter or just meter. Wild meter increases by the damage you deal and receive. Hold any and press any button or none and press crash to do a crash attack. You charge crash attacks by pressing and holding the crash button. This uses up wild and is extremely powerful. Strike the dummy with the cr charge crash attack. Interesting thing about crash attacks, the more you charge, more damage it does and the more meter you actually use does more damage. You can also move around a bit while you're doing the charge. But I need meter back to show people that. So you can move, even in midair, you can move a little bit to aim your uh, charge attack. The charge attacks are an extremely important part of beating up bosses. Alright, now let's actually dodge. Uh, let's actually dodge now. Enemies generally flash red before they're going to attack. Press and hold the dodge button and press rapid or crash. This is a wild counter. Perform a wild counter. I actually did not know how to do one of these until just now. You do definitely want to check out the tutorial. Oh wow, that's cool. Press the panic button to panic! Surprise! This can be used when your wild reaches the panic threshold. Panicking uses all your wild and restores health. Use it when the game gets too crazy, which will happen. When you use the panic, the panic threshold goes up a bit until it requires the entire meter. 
You, it just requires meter up until the panic threshold, and the panic button, or panic wording will turn red when it's possible. Yep. I didn't read what that said. Hopefully you did. To speed up the dummy! Interesting thing about crash attacks, the more meter you have, the more crash attacks deal. Um, and a fully charged crash attack using your full meter will deal like insane boss killing amounts of damage. Like that. Or considerably more than that actually, but that's an example. I definitely recommend checking out the tutorial itself, but you can just jump in the game too. Um, just try not to remember, or try to remember everything like the, uh, um, you know, the counters, the panic. It's all pretty useful. So the game focuses a lot on aerial combat, and you get a lot of freedom in how you move in the air and how you attack. Like, I'm constantly moving the directional stick here while I'm attacking, so you can sort of direct where your enemies go. And this is pretty essential to, you know, knock enemies into each other to do the most damage out of your rapid combos. You can also do crash attacks, which use some of that panic meter up there. So normal attacks, the quick attacks, do not use the meter. The crash attacks do use meter. Also, I love where you can knock down projectiles out of the air like that. The particle effects in this game are awesome. Also, as far as movement goes, we can walk. Walking is for suckers. You can jump, and you can double jump after you drop past, like, after you drop down a certain point. I never quite got the timing of it. Um, I never got the timing of the exact moment. But, double jumping is for suckers, because you can air dash, motherfucker! Yes. The air dash is, like, my main method of transportation, aside from punching people in the face. Which is surprisingly a very viable method of moving around the map. Also, I love the, the particle effects, the sound effects, the music, everything makes it a real well, manic, brawling action. It gets, it has a really nice feel to it that initially when I saw the gameplay footage, I was like, holy shit, that looks fun, but I will never be able to do that. But you actually play it, like half of what I'm doing at the moment is just mashing the square button on my controller, you know, just the light attack button. Um, the basic combo is pretty simple to do. And really, the risk reward is from when you use the crash attacks, which, oops, I already killed that guy. The crash attacks do a lot more damage, but use some of your meter. If I could time one correctly, there. See, they do tons more damage. I think that's better for your score. There's some score tackiness. Also, let's beat up a shot. <laughs> Look at that damage. If you get a good charged up uh, crash attack, it does insane amounts of damage. And the amount of damage it does scales up with how much panic meter you have. And why is it called a panic meter, you ask? Well, once you're past that little panic bar, you can press a button, which on the PlayStation controller is circle, and you knock enemies away and you fully heal your health, which is very useful. But you don't want to use it too early, because every time you use the panic meter, um, the panic, you know, the line that says panic there moves over a bit. And so that means each time you use it, you'll need to have even more meter before you can panic. And eventually it'll require the entire meter. So you don't want to use panic too much. Especially since um, the panic meter is also essential for the crash attacks, which are how you beat up your bosses easily. Most normal enemies like this can be handled pretty easily using the normal rush. You know, the quick spammy attacks. And you kind of want to do this so you can build up your meter. But when anything with a bigger health meter shows up, and there are plenty of enemies that do have bigger health meters, you might want to break out the crash attacks. Also, this happens sometimes. I love it. All these, you know, enemies show up, like the little ninjas. It's pretty sweet. Also, I love getting around in the game. It just feels really nice. Especially the air dashes. The game, like... It might seem more technical than it really is, but, well, at a high level, you know, there's some pretty precise timing with when you want to do a crash attack, but, um, the basics of the game are a lot more accessible than you think, that's what I'm looking for, accessible. Especially if you put it on easy, or even on normal, I don't think it's very hard. Um, 
Apparently people thought it was harder than I did. I guess I got further than most of the playtesters. But, I don't know. I'm a bit of a fan of side-scrolling brawlers. I'm not the best of them. But I definitely recommend giving this a check out. It, if nothing else, because it's so beautiful and it just... It does what it does so well. The It's just, it's manic brawling action. Look at a panic. I didn't need to do that, but I thought it would look cool. Um, my, you want to panic when your health is almost out, but not when you're, like, dead. You don't take very much damage per hit in normal difficulty, though, so... You can be pretty safe and waiting quite a while before you use your crap or your panic. Also, there's a dodge button that I keep forgetting. Um, your triggers, I think, by default, at least they're my triggers, are air dash and dodge. So when something's about to hit you, you want to do that dodge, and you get a nice um, particle effect when you successfully dodge. I forget, does, does that fill your panic meter? I don't have anyone to test it with now. Nice! Whoa! That does that have more range than I thought it did? Huh. In uh when playtesting, I had some issues um aiming the crash attacks, so I wouldn't use them as much. That seemed a lot more forgiving. Also, you don't have to charge up crash attacks, you can just use them. And they still do pretty decent damage, scaled to how much meter you have still, even though you don't charge it, and it still costs some meter. But that can be a safer method of putting additional damage on your opponent. Um, basically, when an enemy has a shield up, you want to hit them with a crash so you break the shield. Because if they have the shield up, they don't get much hit stun. Actually, I don't think they get any hit stun. And without hit stun, it's a lot harder to get them in a little stun loop for the uh, crash attacks. And damage scales up quite a bit while you're charging that um, attack. So, like, you can one hit, like, several non end game, like, non end of level bosses just by using a fully charged crash attack. Right, and now, see, I kind of need a panic attack, but I used up my meter. Um, also, energy, enemy management is something that's a critical factor in certain areas of the game. Sometimes you'll want to focus on the tougher enemies, sometimes you will want to just take out the big baddies immediately. It all depends on what's on the field. There's a pretty good variety of enemies, really. We'll uh, mostly be seeing the variety later on. Oh man. I really want to hit you with a fully charged thing, but I really need to panic. Oh, I get- Panic is half of your health meter, not all of it. I guess. I forgot about that. Well, let's beat up Grayshide. If there's one thing I have issues doing, it is dodging. I'm just bad at remembering to do that. Yeah, he has a P-Laser. And it does that. Like, all dogs have a P-Laser, they just haven't used it on you. This game is a completely true story, by the way. This happens all the time. Yeah, with bosses, basically what you want to do... ...is if you have meter... You want to hit you want to hit him with a heavy crash attack basically right away because when they don't have the shield you can um, wail on them with the rapid attacks you can wail on them with the rapid attacks to build up your meter I'm probably gonna die on this fight spoilers hmm yeah I knew I was gonna die um if you die you can basically start over like right at that same screen. So there's no big, non-score-based detriments for dying. If you want a good score, you're gonna have to not die, unsurprisingly. And I think later builds have something fixed with the score. I wasn't sure what the score wa deal was. I haven't finished the game, so I don't really care about score quite yet. Also, you'll notice a fairly significant spike up in difficulty with the final, with the you know end stage bosses. Um, pretty normal in brawlers, really. So, 
You might consider switching difficulties if, you know, you're having a super tough time with any of the bosses. I did have to switch difficulty on the second boss, not on this boss. You can just kind of spam that. It seems kind of cheap. Excuse me. You're dead. And the bosses always have a tell before, you know, they're gonna attack. So, if you get your timing down, you can dodge pretty much anything. Ah, that was a bad time to charge. Actually, you know what? We're gonna panic, because I... I should use my... I should have more health. Also, when an enemy does not have a shield, you can hit them when they're gonna start an attack, usually. And, you know, cancel their attack. Which is generally preferable to being hit in the face. Also, enemy shields will recharge after... I think after they take so much damage, in the case of bosses. Ouch. Yeah, for that attack, you really just want to get to the ceiling. The P-Laser. I think you can dodge it. You know, just using the dodge button. Man. You can air dash a pretty good distance. So, it's a pretty good way to dodge certain attacks. Aw, oh, man. That's, like, a lot of meter wasted. You can also move around while you're doing your charge attack. So that can be a good way to, you know, start at a certain distance, you know, that you know you can close before the charge attack executes. The, uh, charge crash attacks will auto-fire after a certain amount of time, you know, after you've charged them for so long. So there's a certain rhythm you need to get into. Like I'm not... But, um, I haven't played this since I playtested, like, a few weeks ago. I meant to do a Let's Play earlier, but I didn't, because I'm bad. Let's beat up the stupid chive, shall we? There you go. When possible, you want to break the shield with a crash attack, because breaking their shield with normal quick attacks is not pleasant. Alrighty. Also, I have no idea what the rank stuff means. I'm, I'm not a scory person. We got a D minus, though! Because, yeah, because we died at the very end. Which is not good for your score at all. Alright. Again, really like the music. Each area will pretty much be seeing more new enemies. I think the final area might be an exception. Aside from the final boss, of course. The game introduces more enemies at a very good pace. The uh, the pacing is very good. This guy up. Anyone with projectiles, you might want to take out early because they can really mess you up while you're trying to beat other people up, which can be very annoying. Because if you got to interrupt a combo with a guard or something, you know. Um, a dodge, you know, sometimes that can turn a kill into a not a kill. See, crash attacks are just like made to break guards. And once the guard's broken, you can, you know, wail on with that quick, but... If you're having trouble with the game... Basically, the best I can tell you is remember to dodge, remember to use those crash attacks. Because one crash, a fully charged crash attack, will replace a lot of normal hits, if you can pull it off. Particle effects are so pretty. Ow. Oh, there are also different characters. I'll show you those... I'll show you those in a bit. Ace is probably my favorite. Um, er... 
I'm kind of forgetting how the other characters play. They they play pretty significantly differently, considering it's a uh, brawler. You wouldn't expect a huge amount of difference. But for instance, the ninja character is less focused on the massive amount of rapid combos. And the other guy, what's his deal? I forget, I forget the third guy, Mr. Trenchcoat guy. I think I enjoyed playing as him though. Also against normal enemies, you can just pretty much kill them with a single non-charge crash attack. So if something's like moderate health, like those things, and you just want to get rid of them real quick, just do that. Certain things like those, uh, the, the, uh, the robots, those can be very good to kill early on because the missiles and stuff can really complicate matters when you're trying to take down a tank or something. A figurative tank. Not sure there are any actual tanks. There was a... There's some giant robots. Of course there's giant robots. It's a brawler. I think there was also an elevator stage, because you gotta have an elevator stage. At least there's some sort of vertical shaft or something. Those particles, man. Also, crash attack against large groups of enemies, very fun. And enemies can, um... Defeated enemies will hit other enemies and continue to deal damage. So, that can be a cool way to take down groups. Sure, just throw kunai in my face. Thanks. That's exactly what I wanted for my birthday. Freaking kunai face. Ow. Really should have just used a crash attack on this guy. I really should use that dodge button more. Yeah, if you're like me, my main advice to you is gonna be actually use that dodge button. Because I always freaking forget to. And actually use the crash attacks. And you need to get the timing of the crash attacks down a little bit, so... It's good to practice them on the earlier levels where your meter doesn't matter as much. And I mean, it can be tempting to preserve your meter for uh, doing the panics. But, unless you absolutely need to use the... There we go. Unless you absolutely need to use the panic. Like, don't be afraid to use too much crash, that's what I'm trying to say. Also note, the game is in, like, not active development, but like, debugging. Like, he's got a number of issues that he's, you know, working on to fix. If you've bought the game, I think he puts like a new executable up on his website. And, you know, you can just add that to your game. To get the full game, you're gonna need to buy it. It's uh, on. It's in the humble store. There's a link on his site. It'll that'll be in the video description. I definitely recommend giving it a shot. It's like I want to say it's less technical than it. Ow, ow, ow! Lava, lava! Don't touch lava. I want to say it's less technical than it appears. It's pretty technical. Like, it's not a super easy game, and there's a lot of technical stuff in it. But it's pretty accessible at the same time, like at the low end. It's one of those easy to play, hard to master sorts of things. That's what I'm trying to say. Like, I'm pretty sure if you really needed to, you could use quick attack spam to get your way through the easy mode of this game. But that's no fun, in my opinion. Um, if you want to do real skilled stuff, in the super hard difficulties, you can, you know, go for super crazy score, or just, you know, survival at the hardest difficulty. Already a, uh, worthy foe, or whatever you want to call it. You know what's fun? When doing more technical games like this, compared to, like, an RPG or something, I lose my ability to talk properly. So that's fun. You know, it's supposed to be manic brawling action. So that's good. Also, once an enemy's shield is down, you can bounce them around a lot, and you can use that to knock enemies into lava, like I just did. So that's another area where your crash attacks are really useful. You can direct your crash attacks up, down, or forward. And that can be really important to knocking enemies around, you know, for crowd, crowd management. I had issues with her the first time. She's a really cool boss, though. 
She's not happy that I broke her guard. Yeah, she can put a lot of damage on you. I don't know if she's been nerfed at all, but I had a lot of trouble with her in my first playthrough. <laughs> I completely owned that umbrella, let me tell you. That umbrella was like, wow, it didn't even know it hit it. Because it was an umbrella and not the actual thing I intended to hit. But you know what, that's, that's, that's okay too. There you go. See, you don't need too much meter to actually break a guard. So you don't need to wait for a full hit if you need, like, like in that situation, I could either pummel her down with quick attacks to break her guard, or I could risk it, use my current meter to break her guard, and then build up more meter that way. No, you do need to charge it up a little if you want to actually break the guard. Just a normal crash attack on a boss isn't super much. I could use some help. Or, not help, health. You can break the uh, umbrellas too. However, dodging them is often a better idea because they are very dangerous if you don't. Like, if you don't have the right timing. And you can just wait for the ideal time to uh, hit it. Always look for openings with the bosses. They pretty much always have some opening in their pattern where it's much safer to hit them. Because, you know, that's how boss design works, basically. Depending on the game, but generally speaking, that's what you do. At least in an action game. This is going to be close, but I don't think I'm going to win. Honestly, that's a lot better than I did the first time I played, though. One disadvantage you have when starting a boss um, after dying, you don't have full meter, which you probably will or should have going into a boss after living. Also, one thing to note, you, when you panic, you use all of your meter, even if you don't need all of your meter to start the panic. So, like, if I panic right now, I use all my meter, even though, you know, that's why... If you have meter over the panic line, you really should just execute a crash attack or two, and then get hit in the face. Uh, you, any hit in the face is optional, actually. But yeah, you may as well use the meter that you have if you have, you know, any to spare. Though currently, I'm just going to go for that heal because I didn't have any extra. I don't know if dodging actually increases meter, like, when I'm dodging, I'm usually not watching my meter. I don't pay too much attention to the health UI except, you know, between, you know, attacks. You know, just casually glance at it. Shit, you really gotta be able to actually aim those crash attacks. I'm not that great at that. It takes practice, which I don't have. I, uh, I played this game a decent amount, you know, I got to the last area, but, uh... But, you know, I would normally, you know, play this more before being good at it. That, that is how you be good at things, you play them. Also, Panic knocks enemies away, it does not do much damage. So don't think of it as, like, a way to do damage. If you want to do damage, you want to crash attack. You don't want Panic. Panic is for healing. Healing is good, though. I really like the Panic. You know, it, it gives you two ways to use your meter, which... I love knocking her through the umbrellas. I'm not sure why her umbrellas are made out of glass, but, you know, that's her life choice, not mine. Oh, great. I should have waited till her health bar was back up. Now I'm probably gonna die. I should have waited to crash her when her shield was up. Because if you hit them with a crash when their shield is down, you might do so much damage that they decide to put their shield back up. And that's... that's no good. That's no good! 
Also, I think their shield, like, the first time, like, has less health. Like, this seems to have less health than her shield did just a minute ago. And she was, like, almost dead, but not because I'm bad. As you can see, I have serious issues with using the crash. It's really not as hard as I'm making it look. You just need to get the timing down, and you should practice before you play video games live for, you know, potentially thousands of people. But yeah, what? Whatever. Ugh. Also, you want to wait till your crash is, or your meter is at like at least half before you do a fully charged crash, because it'll do a lot more damage at that point. It scales. I'm not sure if it's like maybe exponentially, but it seems like it does quite a bit more damage once you're past that halfway mark. I hate when we go past each other when I'm trying to use the crash attack. Seems to happen way too often. Are you doing that intentionally? Like, seriously? Like, you should time your crash attacks for when they're gonna be in a pause. Though, depending on the boss, it's not as easy as it sounds. Also, if an enemy gives you an opportunity to gain meter, and you want to panic, panic before they stop letting you build meter. Because if you wait until they put up their shields, or they're about to put up their shields, you're going to have a lot less opportunity to build meter. I hope I'm not being too technical. By meter, I mean the orange meter that says panic there. I hope that's obvious by now. I probably put it in more specific like 20 minutes ago. I started saying that. There you go! See, it does a shit ton of damage if you do it right. So it, it's really worth learning to do the crash. Because fighting the bosses without being able to do it is very embarrassing. But yeah. We'll call that a video. Um, oh, hey, new enemy type. These, the Valkyries can be mean. I think you're called Valkyries, yeah? Yeah, er, no, you're Narwhals. Um, they're like Narwhal, Unicorn, and Valkyrie. Yeah, tricks with giant swords, what's not to like? Aside from the fact they're trying to kill you. Yeah, minor detail. See, there's a unicorn. Let's beat up this unicorn and then we'll call it a video. Also destructible environments. All right, and a nice thing. Let's watch that death animation, shall we? I love knocking them into each other. It's great. Next episode, we will take a look at the next couple stages and the other characters. Also, one slightly annoying thing is, um, I'm using a 360 controller technically. I'm using my 360, or my PS3 emulating a 360. Um, it uses the analog stick to move. And it does that for the menus too. It would be nice if the D-pad was an option. The game works just fine with an analog stick, and I think it actually works a little better in mid-air. But I think brawler fans might prefer, you know, um, a precise D-pad. Not the 360 pad is a precise D-pad. Um, but... I think if that were added in, that'd be cool. How do I... Oh yeah, that's kind of confusing. You go to reset game to go to main menu. I think that should just be labeled main menu. I'm not sure if he's changed that yet. Oh, also, the, the there was some poor grammar in the opening that I meant to mention. Um, that could be fixed if it isn't already. I don't know if it is. Um, I don't think I have the latest version, actually. I will get that for the next video. You can also change the... Can you change the game? Yep! Wait. Okay. Whoops. Sorry about that. I guess you can't change the game speed. At least I don't see it be able to. Hit pause. I'm not sure... That must be the, um... Wait. Is that hit stun or hit stop? I'm not entirely sure what that option does, honestly. I'll just leave it at default. Also, you can set your controls if you want. 
um, but I don't want... So let's just leave that exactly as it is. Also, you can continue wherever you want. Um, I think you could basically go right into the final boss if you really wanted to. I wouldn't recommend doing it. But if you want a high score, you need to start from the beginning anyway. I think there's also, like, two-player mode. Um, I haven't tried out two-player mode, though, honestly. There's also boss rush mode, which is always fun. Oh, and a tutorial! I haven't actually looked at the tutorial. Well, then. Next episode, we'll look at all of the stuff we didn't look at this time, which is pretty obvious. Whatever! Stuff! <laughs>